a fascinating device which creates mesmerizing visual effects of any type of vibration or rotation. The device is called stroboscope. It uses light flashes to create visual effects. Hey, hello guys, this is Shubhabrato and welcome back to my channel, Circuitician. Today, in this video, we will show you that how a stroboscope works and how to make your own stroboscope very easily. So don't skip the video, watch till the end. Let's get started. Hey, if you are new to this channel, then consider subscribing. It is free for you and it will help me a lot to create more exciting videos like this. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about stroboscopes. A stroboscope is an instrument which emits bright flashes of lights to create illusion of slowing down or stopping a moving object. Today, in this video, we are making an LED stroboscope which has several advantages over the traditional xenon tube stroboscope like lower power consumption, lesser in weight and longer lifespan. The first step of making our stroboscope is designing a circuit for it. To design the circuit, first we will need a high power LED which can create strong flashes. Here, I am using a 12 volt 20 watt LED. Then we need some controller circuit to control the flash interval of the LED. Here we will be using a Arduino Pro mini board as a controller. Now we need something via which we can give inputs to the controller for changing the intervals. The commercial strobes uses a rotary control to change the intervals and uses some buttons to change between the modes like frequency and RPM. So in our project we are using a rotary encoder to control the interval. Here, as a unit of interval, we are using two units, Hertz and RPM. RPM will be used to measure the rotational movement and Hertz for the others. So we can change between these two modes using a mode switch, which is basically a push button. In our project, the RPM range will be from 60 to 20,000 RPM and the frequency range will be 1 to 333.33 Hertz. You can see the relation between RPM and frequency by this formula. So it is easily understandable that 60 RPM means 1 Hz and 20,000 RPM means 333.33 Hz. We choose this range because maximum commercial product use this range. I said previously that we are changing the frequency or RPM using rotary encoder. But changing the frequency or RPM by 1 is not gonna work always as our range is very high, like from 60 to 20,000 RPM. So we will use the button of rotary encoder to change the increment or decrement factor. So it will change the value by 1, 10 or 100 as per our settings. Now to visualize the value we are setting, we need a display. So for that we will be using a 0.96 inch OLED display as we want to make the system compact. In the circuit, we are using two more buttons to multiply and divide the current value by 3 to cancel the harmonic frequencies. In simple word, if we see a rotational object freezes at 10 Hz frequency of the strobe, it will also freeze at 30 Hz because 30 Hz is the harmonic frequency of 10 Hz. Now we are done with the control and display unit, now we need something to drive the LED. So here we will be using a N channel MOSFET to drive it. Now we will see the circuit diagram of the whole system. Here we have two parts. One is the controller panel and the other is button panel. In the button panel we have three buttons. First is for mode selection, second is for dividing the values by three and the last one will multiply the value by 3. Next, we have the controller panel. In this panel, we have a couple of relimate connectors. First two pin connector is for providing 12 volt supply, which we will provide via a 12 volt DC adapter. Next connector is for the trigger switch. Basically, it is a switch which enables or disable the LED. Means the LED will only flash when we will press the trigger switch. 
Then this connector is for the LED. These three are two pin connectors. Now we have a five pin connector for the rotary encoder. After this, we have two four pin connector. One is for the button panel and another one is for OLED display. Now here is the controller, which is a Arduino Pro Mini board. The Pro Mini is connected to the Renimate connectors via this net ports. D3, D4 and D5 is connected to the switch data and clock pin of the rotary encoder respectively. And the trigger switch is connected to D6 pin. The three buttons of button panel is connected to D7, D8 and D9 pin of Arduino. For controlling the LED frequency and duty cycle, we will use the pin D10 as the output pin. As we know, the display is a I2C display, so the SDA and SCL pin is connected to A4 and A5 pin of the Arduino Pro Mini. Then we have a power supply section, where I have a 7806 voltage regulator which will step down the 12 volt to 6 volt and provide the power to the Arduino via its raw pin. We have also used two capacitor across the input and output of the regulator to stabilize the voltage. Last, we have used a MOSFET which will drive the LED. The MOSFET is used here is IRFZ44N and as it is not a logic level MOSFET so we are using a VC547 NPN transistor to drive the MOSFET. The D10 pin is connected to the transistor base via a Zener diode 1N4148 for protection purpose. After designing the circuit, we have also designed a PCB for it. And it will look something like this. This small portion is the button panel and the bigger portion is the controller panel. Now let's take a look on the 3D model. This is the Arduino Pro Mini board. This connector is for rotary encoder and this is for the button panel. Here we have the display connector and the trigger switch connector. This two is for supplying 12 volt and this is for the LED. Here we have the 7806, this is the MOSFET and this is the BC547 transistor. And these are the capacitors and the whole PCB will look like this. As I made the PCB a long time ago, so there is some error in this printed version. But don't worry, I have corrected the errors and you can find the schematic and the PCB file in the description of the video. We are making the PCB in our workshop. Videos on PCB making process at home is easily available in YouTube. So I am not gonna explain all these tips.
here is our ready PCB. Now it's time for shouldering. As the code is very long, we have made a flowchart of the code for easy understanding. Within this flowchart, there is a decision box called Rotary Encoder that checks whether the position of the Rotary Encoder has changed. If the position of the Rotary Encoder has increased, the current value of frequency or RPM will be increased by a certain amount. If the position of the Rotary Encoder has not increased, that means the current value of the frequency or RPM will be decreased by that same amount. If the multiply by 3 button is pressed, the current value will be multiplied by 3 only if the result is less than equal to the maximum value. Otherwise, the value will remain same. And same for the divided by 3 button. If it is pressed, the current value will be divided by 3 only if the result is greater than equal to the minimum value otherwise the value will remain same if the mode button is pressed the system will check if it is in rpm mode and if so switch it to the frequency mode and vice versa if the rotor encoder button is pressed the system will check the current value of the increment factor if it is set to 1 it will change to 10 if it is set to 10 it will change to 100 and if it is 100 it will change to 1 again. Once all the steps are completed the system will calculate the on and off time period of the current value of frequency. Now if the trigger switch is pressed the strobe LED will enable and it will flash the LED in the calculated frequency and duty cycle. Now we are attaching the LED to the heat sink using thermal paste so it will keep the LED cool.
are placing everything in the case, we are testing the circuit outside. Okay, so now as the system is working properly, we will place the circuit LED display and the control panel in the enclosure. We are keeping the top plate detachable for doing any type of changes in the code or in the circuit. Now as we have designed the circuit and written the code, it's time to build an enclosure for our stroboscope. We want to give a gun shape to the stroboscope. So, keeping that in mind, we have designed a model in SOLIDWORKS. Now, for building the enclosure, we need a material which can be cut and joined easily and also gives the strength to the structure. So here, we have used 4mm thick sunboard sheet. We already printed all the parts shape which we have to cut from the sunboard sheet. Now, we will go for the cutting and joining process. We have designed the strobe gun handle such a way so that we can keep the DC power socket and the trigger switch inside it. We have also created holes and slots for the buttons, rotary encoder and the display. To give a nice look, we are using black vinyl wrap to the inclusion. Thank you Alex for supporting and showing interest in our YouTube channel. I love to bring new high quality videos for you guys and if you also want to support me then consider clicking the support link located in the video description. Thank you. So here is the final look. So 
here is our stroboscope this is the OLED display this is the rotary encoder and here is three buttons this top button is for changing the mode in between frequency and RPM this button will divide the current frequency or RPM value by three and this button will multiply by three here is the port for the DC power supply and this is the trigger switch this is the trigger switch here I made some holes for the air ventilation for the LED heat sink and here I have attached a, uh, a diffusion paper to protect the LED now I will power it up I'm using a 12 volt DC adapter By this button, I can increase the RPM value or decrease the RPM value by 1. And if I press the rotary encoder switch once, then the value will increase by 10. And if I press the button again, the RPM value will change by 100. Here you can see. And if I press once again, it will go to the 1 increment factor. And by this mode button, you can change the RPM mode into frequency mode. And here also, you can change the value using rotary encoder. Suppose now, this is the uh, value of frequency 10. And if I press this button, it will multiply the value by 3. And if I press this button, it will divide the value by 3. So that is it. Now, if I press this button here, it will create the stroboscopic effect. Here is some cool visual effects which we have created by our stroboscope. So this is the making video of stroboscope. The nifty device has variety of uses in different fields from engineering to entertainment. With the ability of freezing motion or revealing patterns, the stroboscope 
has opened new ways of understanding the world around us. Whether you are an aspiring engineer, a creative artist or an enthusiast, you can always find value in exploring the principle of stroboscope. I hope you enjoyed learning about stroboscope and its uses and if you have any question or any feedback so feel free to leave it in the comment section and if you want to watch more exciting videos like this then make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and the most important thing be creative.